Joining me now on the phone is CBS News senior investigative producer Pat Milton. Uh, Pat, you've been following this investigation from the beginning and also breaking news that moves it forward. Uh, what do we know now? What's the latest? Well, I think uh, the latest that came out of uh, this news conference uh, is that uh, officials are saying that in probing uh, the blast in New York and New Jersey, they have found no evidence so far that the suspect in the attacks was part of a broader terrorist cell. Um, they said that, uh, you know, they found that uh, comforting at this point. But, of course, the investigation is still in, in the early stages, and they're still uh, continuing to best investigate, and they're trying to uh, determine whether there are any other associates uh, had a role or even knowledge of what was going on. Yep. Um, they ha won't discuss the rest of the investigation, but they said as far as um, we are concerned right now, they are not actively looking for anyone else. Now, Pat, there have been two explosions and two suspicious items found in the past you know, 36 to 48 hours. Uh, how many of those have been definitively tied to the suspect by law enforcement, and how many are, are still yet to be connected? Well, they connected uh, Romani to uh, the bombing. Uh, one of them uh, was because of a fingerprint they said was belonging to the suspect to him. Uh, was found on one of the bombing devices in New York. Um, they're also looking to uh, tie him to New Jersey by a, a flip phone uh, cell phone that was uh, was found there. But the race, also, the race attack in New Jersey, or the uh, train, the attempted attack on the, the train station. The, the, uh, Seaside Heights in New Jersey. But it seems that the Elizabeth train station attack or attempted attack, it was left out of the press conference. They didn't mention that they were able at this point to tie the suspect to that bombing. I assume they're trying to, but has that link been made? Um, I don't know whether the link's been made. Uh, they're still uh, looking into it, and obviously they're highly suspicious because that's where he was living with his family in Linden, New Jersey. The police commissioner in New York, James O'Neill, and also Mayor de Blasio, uh, both referenced um, a question in regards to if there are any more possibility of any more bombs that may be planted in the area. Neither really answered clearly. The only thing that they would say is that New Yorkers should feel like they are safe, that they have um, investigators on this, and that they have made an arrest, and right now this is the only arrest that they are expecting to make at this point in the investigation. Is that what you are hearing as well? Yes, well, I'm hearing uh, that uh, NYPD has uh, done an extraordinary job in fanning out throughout the area with uh, dogs and all kinds of uh, detection devices looking for the possibility of any bombs. But uh, as the mayor suggested, everyone has got to remain uh, vigilant, uh, just like uh, the people uh, in Linden, New Jersey, uh, notifying police when they found the backpack uh, that was containing the uh, bomb. So I think that uh, we should... Uh, uh, try to uh, remain uh, vigilant uh, as to any other explosive devices that may be planted somewhere. And what but about they feel Ra confident at this point that uh, they've got them all. What about Rahami? I mean, are we learning any more about his background? I mean, we know that that uh, he worked for his family at a fried chicken restaurant. Uh, he lived upstairs from there. People that frequented that restaurant were quoted um, in some articles on the Associated Press saying that he seemed like a nice guy, normal guy. That seems to be, though, the initial description of past suspects at the beginning of investigations. Well, the profile of him is still uh, emerging. Uh, we know that uh, he came to this country from uh, Afghanistan, and, uh, and we don't know that much about his, his background. We know that he was working at the fast food restaurant that his family uh, ran in, um, in New Jersey, and we also know the family lived above that uh, restaurant. Uh, additionally, he traveled to Afghanistan, perhaps to visit family, perhaps for other reasons uh, a few years ago. Uh, what are law enforcement doing, or what's your understanding of what's being done to probe that potential connection? Yeah, well, we're still uh, looking into that and trying to confirm uh, his travel, uh, you know, what kind of travel he did, where was he, and, and uh, who was he meeting with. And they're still trying to put, put those pieces together. Have you learned anything more about where he may have bought his his uh, ingredients to to build these bombs all of the supplies well they haven't uh, told us um, of all the ingredients that made up uh, these bombs but um, there most of these uh, bombs uh, with the uh, pressure cooker bomb and and also the uh, pipe bomb they're already available uh, over the counter 
Um, there was a uh, three pipe bombs that were knitted together uh, that was used at Seaside Heights on uh, Saturday at the uh, Marine race. And uh, we know one of those bombs went off and the other two did not. Um, we also know there was a cell phone. Uh, we don't know whether that was used um, to, uh, to detonate, but it uh, appears that it was the ignition source. Um, and then we, we know that uh, they are looking at whether black powder was used in the uh, devices in New York. And again, that is easily available uh, commercially. All right, uh, Pat Milton, this is an evolving situation, obviously, uh, for law enforcement, but also for journalists. So we're going to let our uh, CBS News senior investigative reporter, Pat Milton, go back to the phones. Pat, thank you very much. Thank you very much.